Hello, and thank you for joining me. Today, we are going to discuss bystander intervention strategies, ways all of us can intervene when we witness sexual misconduct in workplace contexts. Your decision to spend a few minutes today on this topic is an important step forward in preventing sexual harassment and assault. Have you ever felt powerless in the face of a situation that you knew was harmful to your colleague? Many of us have been there and it's never easy to act. But my hope is that when you finish watching this video, you'll be equipped with some strategies that you can deploy to intervene in future situations. I'm Sharon Potter, Professor of Sociology at the University of New Hampshire and co-founder and the director of the Prevention Innovations Research Center. My area of research expertise is sexual violence intervention strategies. So let's start with developing a common understanding of what we are talking about. What is sexual misconduct? Sexual misconduct is unwanted behaviors that range from an inappropriate joke to a violent physical attack. Sexual misconduct often involves power dynamics with the person who is being targeted at the risk of losing professional opportunities should he or she challenge the perpetrator's behaviors. Sexual harassment and assault in workplace contexts are not new problems but we are experiencing a broadening public awareness of these issues as a result of the Me Too and Time's Up movements. This growing awareness gives us a collective opportunity to work towards reducing the problem. Before we can intervene in an evolving situation, we need to know how to identify situations that may warrant intervention. There are some situations that are unambiguous. So if you witness someone in physical danger, you should seek assistance from formal authorities immediately. Today, we are talking about situations that are not as obvious. If you see a situation that feels uncomfortable to you as a witness, you should trust your instincts and directly or subtly assess the situation. And one of the best ways to prepare to intervene is to spend some time thinking about how you would respond to different types of situations. At the end of a conference presentation session, you see a prominent professor approach one of the graduate student presenters. He rubs her arm and suggests a meeting in his hotel room to discuss her research. While you understand the graduate student may be flattered by the attention and you do not want to thwart a potential opportunity for a legitimate professional development conversation, the professor's approach makes you uncomfortable. So what can you do? As a bystander, you could address the target directly and offer an alternate, safer context for the conversation. You could say something like, I want to hear more about the research as well. Can the three of us have a cup of coffee in the lobby? If your sense is that the student would like help removing herself from the situation entirely, you could also offer her such an out. For example, you could remind the student that she is late to meet someone across the street. Both of these approaches offer a rescue to the student and hopefully send a subtle message to the professor that you do not think his behavior is appropriate. Should your interpretation of the situation be incorrect, the student has the autonomy to say no to your suggested alternatives. You might also choose to address the professor directly by saying something like, I'm so glad to hear that you are interested in the student's excellent work. I think it would be more appropriate for you to have a conversation in a more public setting. You could also disrupt the situation by doing something like flickering the lights in the room and announcing that everyone needs to leave as the folks are setting up for the next session. 
You could take that opportunity to pull the student aside and ask if she would like assistance. You can let her know that you found the professor's behavior inappropriate and that you are really sorry this has happened to her. You can also let her know ways to report this behavior. Finally, if you are concerned about a situation but do not feel comfortable intervening yourself, you can seek the help of others. In this situation, you could see if there is an association staff member in the room or ask a member of the hotel staff for assistance. You could also enlist the help of a colleague in the audience. Intervening as a bystander in ongoing and single cases of workplace harassment poses similar and different challenges. In workplace settings, people feel their careers can be at risk if they intervene, particularly if they call out a senior colleague or a popular peer. The choice to intervene is often shaped by a person's own status. People with less status because of gender, rank, race, and other characteristics may experience barriers to intervening. That is why it is especially important for senior colleagues in secure positions to lead by example and intervene in a visible manner that signals to others that this type of behavior is not acceptable. In many of these situations, the target blames him or herself. So when a bystander says to the target, this is not appropriate behavior, or this is not your fault, the statement reinforces to the target that the behavior is not appropriate, it bolsters their confidence for seeking help, and has other positive implications for how the target moves forward and is confident in their identity as a professional. It is always up to you to decide whether to respond to a situation, and that is not always an easy decision. We made this video so that if a situation arises for which you do feel comfortable intervening, you will have a sense of what can be done. As I said earlier, the key to intervening is thinking through strategies in advance. Sexual harassment and assault in workplace contexts can ruin people's careers and their lives. It is important for us to come together collectively to ensure that our colleagues are safe. Being a bystander can be uncomfortable and involves some risk, but we need to empower ourselves to act to build a safe community.